Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 
Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. Unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. Or just visit our website. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. You know, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and like adults it. make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. Michael Long with American Family Insurance offers auto, home, business, farm, and life insurance, which includes motorcycles, boats, ATVs, UTVs, classic and antique autos, renters, manufactured homes, rentals, along with event coverage such as weddings, golf hole-in-ones, conferences, and much, much more. He's licensed in Indiana, Ohio, and Florida. For more information, look him up on Facebook to see insurance tips and to sign up for his agency giveaways. Michael Long, American Family Insurance, all your protection under one roof. I like the power deck. You lift it up, clean your deck out, and then you wash it out. And you know, I can change those blades in approximately five minutes. In our terrain, we have to have a mower that can back up quick, turn quick. Nothing's ever stopped that mower. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for kids, teens, or young adults. It's just not. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs. And dangerous things like metals and volatile organic compounds into your body. And nicotine, the same highly addictive substance found in regular cigarettes. Nicotine can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. Affecting learning, memory, attention, and impulse control and priming the brain for other addictions. Vaping products also come in kid-friendly flavors that can make them appealing to youth. And many kids also use other drugs, like marijuana, in vaping devices. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping, because when you talk, they hear you. At Eddie Gilstrap, our customers are family. Rated in the top 6% nationwide in Ford dealers, we pride ourselves on our no pressure environment, honesty, and integrity. Come see us today and discover why we're different. Eddie Gilstrap Motors. I'm David Calhoun, Grass Clippings LLC. During the summer, I'm on this thing eight, 10 hours a day. I know the feel of it. Grasshopper means quality. They don't fall apart. I've looked at all of them in the industry. I don't think nothing can stand up to them. Lynx Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812-883-4154.
That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save. As your American Family Insurance agent, Michael Long can offer you dependable auto, home, business, and life insurance, as well as other insurance products. He's big enough to serve and small enough to care. His team and their unique backgrounds, trainings, and experiences have prepared them well to help meet your insurance needs. Additionally, as residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you. Together, they are building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. When it comes to your car insurance, you deserve more than a card tucked in your glove box. That's why American Family Car Insurance goes beyond a piece of paper or an app to give you smart, customized coverage and real peace of mind. No matter how your life changes, you can feel comfortable you will have the right auto insurance protection and support every step of the way. Not sure how much or what type of coverage is right for you? Michael Long is the person to talk to. Right, brothers, we're more than tractors. Stop in and take a look around. You'll be surprised. Right here on Highway 60 in Borden. I live in Campbellsburg, Indiana, here at the West Washington High School, here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium. Home of the Ron Smith Court is our uh, second semifinal game here of sectional number 61. We're about ready to get underway here as the first game. Borden uh, gets the uh, win 61 to 44 over the South Central Rebels. So the Borden Braves move to the final game on Monday night here at West Washington as our sectional has been backed up a day or two here due to yeah, the due to weather, weather that went through there uh, the area yesterday but our second semifinal coming up here features the Lanesville Eagles uh, taking on the Rock Creek Academy Lions here in this uh, second uh, round semifinal game here of sectional number 61 of course uh, these two teams Lanesville coming in with a 1 and 20 record. Only one win on the year for Lanesville. But they're coming in on a winning streak. On a winning streak. They got their their win in their last game of the regular season and then uh, Rock Creek uh, coming in with a 8 and 14 record, but I tell you folks that this Rock Creek team, we seen it the other night in their first round game against Christian Academy that uh, they have got a lot of tools, a lot of weapons uh, in their arsenal and uh, you know, there'll be a handful for Lanesville to handle here tonight, but uh, you just never know when it comes to sectional basketball. And, uh, you know, I thought Rock Creek played extremely well uh, on Tuesday night in that first round against Christian Academy. Actually kind of an upset, I felt like, yeah. on paper. But I tell you. Uh, the, the schedule is deceiving. It because, is deceiving. You know, Rock Creek comes in with their, their record, but they play a lot of 3A and 4A teams. Exactly. So they are, you know, much, uh, enrollment-wise, they're much smaller. Can't say that they're much smaller athletic-wise. No. Because they come with a 7-footer and a 6-8. Um, so, I mean, they, they match up against those bigger schools just based on their size. Um, up and down the, the Rock Creek, you know, roster, every one of them is just super athletic. Yeah. And that makes it hard to match up. You know, they're, a, like you said, they're a, a matchup nightmare for just about anybody, um, you know, that they they play in the 1A schedule. Right. Um, and if you look, this is a this is a rematch game from back uh, February the 7th. These two teams uh, played at Rock Creek um, as uh, the, the Lions come away with a 63-37 to victory over – uh, the Lanesville Eagles. So they, they have played each other this season. And, uh, you know, so they're familiar with each other. But uh, I tell you, there's just a lot of weapons, as you mentioned, for Rock Creek. And, you know, with the size that they have and the guard play, they've got some really quick players on the floor. I tell you, I really, really, really like uh, K1 Vico. He, yeah. uh, he, he uh, looked <laughs> Extremely he had one of the athletic. most athletic dunks that I've seen in a long time. And dunk that dunk 
uh, you know, it was all over social media uh, uh, on Tuesday night and Wednesday. Um, one of my uh, one of my uh, fellow co-workers comes to me and said, did you see that live? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, it was tremendous. And yeah. I, he showed me the video, and it was impressive on video. But to see it live looked really good. And then, of course, you know, they've got Mario Dipper, who's a senior uh, seven-footer uh, for them. And then I also like uh, uh, Caleb Treat. Yeah. I think he, uh, he, he plays uh, extremely well for Rock Creek. He would, he would be a center on most teams, yes. but it gets to play the power forward yes. because of Dipper being on the floor. So, yeah, and then, and then you put their guard play uh, into play. Ladarius Wallace, uh, number two, uh, really, really uh, good player. I like Jackson as well, Brown, Kalen Brown. They've got some guards that are, that are really, really uh, uh, good. And then Taylor, uh, also number 12, uh, Gavin Taylor, uh, the sophomore guard. Uh, so, you know, Rock Creek, like you said, they've got all the pieces to the puzzle, so to speak. Uh, you know, Lanesville, uh, they're going to come in here. Their tallest uh, player on the floor is going to be 6'2", and that's a senior, uh, Ethan Patterson, uh, for them. And then they've got a host of 6'2 players uh, in Elias and Payne also at 6'2", and uh, Nolan Hall at uh, 6'2". But, you know, they're giving up a, a decisive size advantage in this game. So here again, Lanesville is going to have to do the little things well uh, if they want to try to have an opportunity to uh, knock off Rock Creek in this ball game here tonight. Well, Lanesville is playing for their coach tonight. You know, he has already announced that this is his uh, final season. So, um, you know, only getting one win on the season. Hopefully going, you know, another couple of games here in sectional play. But this is uh, Michael Miller's last season there where he is 200 and 94 and 247 in his 23rd, 23rd year. year. Yes, so, that's you know, he's looking. been there a long time. Yep, he has <laughs> been there a long time and, uh, you know, really good uh, coach, but his last season here. So they're they're definitely playing for him and uh, and we'll see what, uh, what they can do here tonight in this contest as we're about ready for our uh, starting lineups here to get this game underway here in sectional 61 here in our semifinal matchup between the Lanesville Eagles and the Rock Creek Academy Lions coming up here in just a few seconds as the clock winds down here. Great crowd for that first game. You know, at first I didn't think there was that many people here, but Borden and uh, South Central both had a big crowd. Yeah. And uh, several of them still sticking around here in the gym, but uh, uh, looking forward for this uh, second semifinal here tonight. Home team, will be, the Home team will be Rock Creek, and Lanesville will be the visitors on the scoreboard. So I'm sure uh, PA announcer Claude Combs will okay, run down right. all the players uh, from uh, Lanesville as they get and announced non -starters here. Non-starters for Lanesville. They'll run them all down here, 32, Jackson Payne. I'm, I, I can't hardly hear in here, it's so loud, <laughs> but uh, Guernsey, number 10, number 21, Patterson, number 42, Brady Elias, number 12, and number 24 for the Eagles. Now the starters for Lanesville. Number 11, Caleb Bulls. He's a junior at 5'10". We'll start at one guard for Coach Miller. Number 13, Gene Kuzmeyer. He's a junior at 5'9". Number three, Jack Crosby, the senior, will start at one forward. Uh, Hall, the uh, junior, will start as well. And number 32, Jackson Payne, will round out the starting lineup at 6'2", and a sophomore for Coach Miller's Eagles here tonight. Now for the uh, starters for Rock Creek. Number four, Biko will get the start again for Rock Creek here tonight. 
number 12, Taylor, also will start for Rock Creek. Number two, Ladarius Wallace, we talked about, will start at one guard as well. A 6'7 senior, Jalen Treat, the uh, power forward, wearing number 40. Mario Dipper, the seven foot uh, senior, will start at center for the Lions here in this game tonight. So Rock Creek getting ready to take on Lanesville here in this second semifinal. They will face the winner of this one, will face the Borden Braves on Monday night here at West Washington for the sectional 61 final and the chance to move on to the regional action. So we'll get the jump ball here. As it looks like Biko's actually going to jump it up. Dipper will. I <laughs> can't say I blame him after the. Biko uh, can really get up. We talked about that dunk. You know, he uh, he goes at 6'2", and he's going to jump it up against number one Hall for the Eagles. So Biko against Hall here. The ball goes in the air, and actually Hall out jumped yeah. him. As he tips it into the backcourt, number 11, Boyles will bring it across for Lanesville, picked up there by Taylor, and they'll get it far side. It goes over there to three, now down low, but they have to kick it back out to number 32, Payne. Shot up there by number one, Hall, no good. Rebound pulled down by Treat, and the Rock Creek off and running. They'll get it back to Taylor over to Biko. Biko back out high. It'll come to Wallace. Wallace will set things up here for the Lions. He'll get it off to Taylor, far wing. Now they go baseline. Biko tries to cut it down in there to Treat. He finally gets it to him. Now back to Taylor, over to Biko. He'll shoot the three, in and out, no good. Rebound pulled down by Hall for the Eagles. He'll get it off there to Crosby. Crosby down low, 32, had the shot up, no good pain. And the rebound pulled down by Rock Creek back the other way, Biko. Hands it off to Taylor. Taylor will wheel around back to Biko. He'll go baseline again. Gets it off to Treat. He drives it in the lane and scores it. So nice Treat, bucket there by Jacob Treat. Yeah, first bucket of the night. Two to nothing, Rock Creek. Eagles back up. Boyles with it. He'll get it off over there to Crosby. Back to Boyles. Now they'll get it across to 32 Payne. Payne cross court pass. Goes over to Crosby. He'll drive in the lane. Kicks it back out to Payne. Now over to number 13, Kuzmeyer. He'll hand it back out to Boyles. Boyles back to Kuzmeyer. Or no, that was Payne with the shot. No good, and it went off Rock Creek. Nope, went off Lanesville's foot. Out of bounds, it'll go back to Rock Creek. Rock Creek coaches saying you've got to move along that for the offensive side. They're, they're standing still, waiting for something to happen. Yeah, Biko gets it into Wallace, and he's quickly up the floor with it. He'll get it off to Taylor. Taylor with it, looking down inside, finds Treat. Treat will throw it up off the backboard. I think he threw that one a little a hard. A little so hard. Turnover there by the Lions. It'll go back to Lanesville. Oh, I knew I was going to sneeze. They get it back to Boyle. <laughs> Sorry about that. And uh, Boyles will control it out front. He'll go to Kluzmeyer now down low as they get it into Crosby. Back out to Kluzmeyer for the three. No good. Dipper with the board, but it's off of him. He stepped out of bounds. So it'll go back to the Eagles here. Lanesville, two inbound underneath their own bucket here. Rock Creek, two. Lanesville, nothing here. Just in the opening minute here of this contest. Ball come in bounds. They throw it up high to Boyles. He'll get it off to Kluzmeyer. Far side, it'll go to Crosby. Back out high to Hall. Hall over to Kluzmeyer. Now back out. As they get it out there on the floor to Boyles, tipped away from him, and he stepped over yeah, the out of bounds. Yeah, that's got to be an over there. Yep. That, that caused by Taylor, he was just all over um, the guard, uh, Crosby, so he knocks it back across the line. So Lanesville with the substitution here, number 21, Patterson, going to check into the game. Out comes Nolan Hall. So Hall will come out. And Rock Creek will inbound. They'll get it into Wallace. Wallace will hand it back off to Taylor. He'll dribble far side and get it off to Biko. Now down low to Dipper. He'll spin, throw it up, and got it to go. That's going to be a, a huge mismatch all four, night long. Yeah, four to nothing here at Rock Creek. 
Back the other way, Boyles with it. He'll get it off over there to Crosby. And a 10 second call, so two turnovers in a row for Lanesville, and that's gonna give it back to the Lions. It seemed like an awful quick Yeah, 10. I thought that was quick. It seemed more like five. <laughs> But nevertheless, Rock Creek will get it back. They'll inbound to Biko. He'll bring it across, hands it off over there to Wallace. Now to Taylor. Taylor with it. Dribbles back out high, looking. He'll hand it back to Wallace. Now over to Biko on the far wing. Biko gets it back over to Wallace. And it's he be lost. A turnover it. coming back the other way. So two turnovers apiece here in this first quarter. Four to nothing, Rock Creek. Waynesville has yet to get a shot to fall. They'll inbound as they get it into Boyles. Boyles will get it up to Patterson and back to Boyles. He'll get it across, gets it over far side to Crosby. Now they go back to Boyles. He gets trapped down there in the corner and tipped away from him, but a foul gonna be called on the floor. That's gonna go against number 12, Taylor, his first, team's first. When you saw there, they sent him to double. Whoever had the ball, he was just chasing. He left his guy completely. So the Eagles to inbound. They look to get it in here. Boyles will throw it in. It'll come into Payne. Payne will hand it back to Boyles, and he'll go back to work here. Boyles gets trapped, gets it off here to 13. That's Kuzmeyer. He'll get it back out to Payne. Payne finds his guy down low. Boyles on the baseline. He spins, throws it up. Couldn't get it to go, and the rebound pulled down by Biko as he's back and running for the Lions. He'll try to dip it in there, and he got lucky there. Got tipped, and Taylor come up with it. Now they go to Dipper, back to Taylor. Taylor drives, dishes out to Biko. He'll get it back out to Wallace, and Wallace will reset the offense. Goes off on the far wing to Biko. He'll wheel around, gets it over here to Taylor. He'll shoot the three ball, can't get it to go. Rebound, however, up and in by Wallace. The offensive board back up and in for Wallace, and it's six to nothing, Rock Creek. Lanesville get it in, comes into Boyles, and stolen by Biko, and he'll score it and one. Nice job by Biko there. As he tips it away, there's that athleticism we talked about, and he's going to have the opportunity to go to the line as that foul's going to go against Boyles, his first, team's first. Couple guys checking in. Hodges comes back, or comes in for the first time, all back into the game. Eight to nothing here. Rock Creek out ahead early. Four minutes, 15 seconds gone in the first quarter. Biko with a chance to make the lead nine to nothing. He misses the free throw, however. And the rebound pulled down by Crosby for the Eagles. Crosby will bring it up for them. Biko on him, gets it across the timeline. And he'll set the offense here. Crosby dribbles, now takes off, goes in the lane, gets cut off, goes baseline with it, shot up by Patterson, no good, got his own rebound, however. Dishes back out to Hodges. Now he'll hand it off, it'll go to Crosby. He'll get it out to Hall, Hall. Now with the bad pass, another turnover, and it's still by Biko, and he'll lay it in. So he's got four in the contest, and it's 10 to nothing. Timeout by Lanesville yeah, here. Coach Miller gonna burn one early here. Not liking how his boys are playing at the moment, down 10 to nothing. Yep. Gonna be a full timeout, full so time we're gonna out. step aside, take a commercial break. And we'll right, brothers, we're more than tractors. Stop in and take a look around. You'll be surprised. Right here on Highway 60 in Borden. I like the power deck. You lift it up, clean your deck out, then wash it out. And you know, I can change those blades in approximately five minutes. In our terrain, we have to have a mower that can back up quick, turn quick. Nothing's ever stopped that mower. Three, two. All right, back here live, sectional 61 semifinal action here, game number two, as Lanesville digs herself a hole here, down 10 to nothing to Rock Creek. Here with 3.02 to go here in this first quarter, and Lanesville still looking for their first points. And you know, their boys' team has struggled this year, but man, how about their girls' yeah, their team? Girls they won play. a state title in Class 1A, so congratulations to 
Lanesville uh, Lady Eagles for that uh, that win in the state finals and uh, kudos to those uh, kids that uh, uh, we watched them play uh, the West Washington <laughs> girls here or down at Lanesville earlier in the year. Man, they have quite a girls basketball team. So uh, congratulations to them on that state championship. Great to see the teams from the south do really well yeah. in the state finals. Three, we had four teams in the state finals in all classes and three of the four won it. So. That's huge. Lanesville gets it back here after the timeout as Hodges will dish it off to Crosby. He'll bring it across the timeline. Lanesville still looking for their first bucket. He'll get it back over there to Hodges. Now in the corner, it'll go over there to Hall. He'll kick it back out to Hodges. Hodges in the corner, back to Hall. Hall back to Hodges now. And I tell you, really good defense here by Rock Creek. Shot up by Hall from the corner. And he hits it just a two-point shot. First bucket for them tonight. So 10 to two here. Treat with it into the free throw line. He'll dish it out to Biko, back to Treat. He'll dip it down to Dipper. He'll spin and gonna be a foul on the floor, I believe. Yeah. Number 21, I believe Patterson will be guilty for that personal foul. It's a really nice two-man game there that they're able to run with Treat and Dipper. His first foul, team second. And the Lions to inbound underneath their own bucket here. They'll get it in. It'll come in there to Brown, who checked in the game. He'll get it back to Wallace. Wallace goes baseline to Treat. He'll dish it into Dipper. He'll spin, throw it up wildly. Couldn't get it to go, but Treat there to tip it back in. He's got his fourth point, and it's 12-2. to Lanesville back the other way. They'll get it across to Payne. Payne back out to Crosby. Crosby on the attack, pulls it up in the lane, throws a runner blocked by Dipper out of bounds. So it'll go <laughs> it's back gonna to take Eagles. a lot yeah. to get one of those flipped up finger yeah. rolls to go in over Dipper. You go in there and Dipper just, uh, you know, seven foot, he able to alter that shot and he did that one. So the long pass will come into Hall. Hall kick it over to Payne, Payne with it. Now gets it back out to Crosby. Crosby back over here to Payne. Here on the near wing, back out high, it comes to Crosby. He'll get it off to Patterson now. Patterson looking baseline, nothing there. Has to flip it over on the far side to Hodges. Hodges back out, top of the circle to Payne. As he gets it back over to uh, Crosby. Crosby backs it out, gets it to Hall now. Hall back to Crosby. He gets cut off there by Treat. He'll flip it back out to Hall, far side to Payne. Now in the corner to Patterson. Patterson back out and stolen. Still there by Brown. He'll drive and he'll score it easy on the run out. So Brown with his first bucket and it's 14 to two. Back the other way, Crosby with it. He'll get it down to Payne. Payne looking, nothing there inside. So he'll flip it back out and another It'll turnover. Another turnover. That's four already on yeah. Lanesville. So it'll go back over to Rock Creek here with 45 seconds. Number 10, Jackson. Check in for Biko and number 32, Nord, will come into the game. Terrence Nord, the freshman for Rock Creek, gets in his first action. He'll inbound, it'll come in to Brown. Brown with it, goes far side to Nord. Nord looking, now pulls it down, shoots a deep three, got a bounce but couldn't get it to go, and Treat gonna get called for the offensive foul there as he kind of pushed off. So his first personal, team second. As number 12, Taylor will come back in for Nord. Coach Brown not happy with him shooting that <laughs> yeah, three at him. Right think. off the bat, right comes the out, bat. lets one go, and Coach Brown yeah. immediately to the bench. Yeah, not what he wanted. So they get it to Payne, does Lanesville. Now up to Hall. He'll kick it back out there to Hodges. Now he'll hand it off to Crosby. Crosby with 25 seconds. Flips it back cross court to Hall. Dipper out on him. Hall now on the attack, pulls up. And he got the shot nice to go. Another there by two Hall. Point. So Hall's got all four of their points. 14 to four, back the other way. Taylor with it. He'll get it off to Jackson. Jackson with it. He'll pull it down. Now he'll shoot the three. 
And no, nothing but uh, backboard there, and that's the end of the first quarter. So 14 to four Rock Creek, we'll take a break and come back here on your home for sectional number 61, West Washington Live. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. All right, back here live West Washington High School. Sectional number 61, second semifinal game of the night here between Rock Creek and Lanesville. Rock Creek out to a 14-4 lead here at the end of the first quarter. Pretty balanced scoring attack from them. They had uh, five players score in that uh, first quarter. So Rock Creek will get it to start the second quarter. They'll inbound to Taylor off the Beco, now to Dipper here on the baseline. He'll kick it back out to Taylor. Taylor gets it out to Wallace. Wallace out high with it. He'll reset the offense off to Taylor. Inside the dipper, he looks, gets it down low to Treat. He'll dish to Biko, baseline. Biko goes up strong and just able to alter his shot. He's, he's able to hang point. in the air. Yeah, he's got his six point of the night, 16 to 10. Now Treat with the steal. As Lanesville turns it over again, Treat will dish to Biko and he'll score it easy. Eight points on the night, 18 to four. Lanesville with it, Hodges will get it up to Hall. He'll get it across the timeline. Now gets it back out to Hall, almost stolen there by Wallace. Now back to Hall, he'll drive, goes in strong, and Dipper <laughs> knocks it out of bounds. So it'll go back to Lanesville un underneath their own bucket here. I mean, nothing you can really do on no. that one, just so long. If you take it in the lane, you know there's a chance he's going to block it. Lanesville's going to have to try to set up some sets to get some guys open. Go inbound, get it into Hall. He'll pull it down now and reset the offense. Gets it off here to 21 Patterson. He'll go down there baseline to number 13 uh, Kluzmeyer. He gets cut off. Now gets it off there to Hodges. Hodges wheels around and a steal. Picked his pocket. There goes Wallace. He'll go in drive. Got fouled. No call. And Treat knocks it out of bounds. So it will go back over to Lanesville there. I tell you, Wallace wanted to foul, yeah. and I'm not sure he didn't deserve to get one there, but the official didn't see it that way, so Lanesville gets it back here. Patterson then bound. He'll get it into Hodges. Back over to Patterson. Patterson across the timeline now. Gets trapped out high with it. Almost stolen. They get it off to Kluzmeyer. He'll pull it down and shoot it and got it to go. Eighteen to six, down quickly. Biko tries to tip it in, no good. Rebound pulled down there by Kluzmeyer, and he'll bring it back up for the Eagles. Gets it off the hall, wide open three-pointer. He can't score it, got his own rebound. He'll pull it down, shoot it free throw line, bounces around, can't get it. Treat with the board for the Rock Creek Academy, and he'll dish it off quickly to Taylor. Taylor tries to dish to Mario Dipper, and Dipper's like, hey, don't, don't, <laughs> don't throw it throw at me, low, just lob it up. up. Yeah. <laughs> So another turnover, Rock Creek up to four. Number 11, Boyles back into the game. He'll check in for number two, Hodges. Number 10, Guernsey also in uh, there at that break. And now uh, Crosby will check back in for Patterson. So 
so Patterson two inbound as he'll get it in. It'll come in there to Boyles. Boyles will bring it across the timeline. 18 to six, Rock Creek 12 point lead here. They get it to Crosby. Crosby gets it off there to uh, Klusmeyer. Klusmeyer wheels around, tries to go baseline with it. Tipped off of Taylor's foot. So it'll go back. To, oh, they, now they changed, did he change? No, no, he said. He said he said it went off his foot. Coach Brown didn't think it went off his foot, but. <laughs> so Lanesville will inbound on, underneath her own bucket. They'll get it in. Hall will pull it down. He'll hand it back over there to Crosby. Crosby now baseline to Boyles. Gets blocked by Treat. A jump ball called. It'll go back to Lanesville. Biko now checking back in for Rock Creek. He'll give Dipper a break. Dipper will come to the bench. You want Biko. And Lanesville looks to inbound. They'll get it in. It'll come into Hall. He'll find a cutter down the lane in Klusmeyer, and he scores his fourth point. So it's 18-8. Biko back the other way to Taylor. Taylor off to Wallace. He'll shoot the deep three, and he buried it. Nice bucket there by Wallace. 21 Coach Miller going to take a timeout here. 5-11 to go. 30-second timeout. Second. So we'll stay here with you. You know, the, the it's stretched out a little bit more, um, but Lanesville's playing, playing tough D on the defensive side. Even though they've given up 21 points so far, they've still been able to limit the touches from Dipper down low. Yeah. And, you know, really it's Biko who's, who's hurting them on the hustle right. plays, you know, down – down the lane, cutting, getting open, um, and really scoring out of transition too. So yeah, he's got eight to lead Rock Creek, and uh, you know Dipper only has the one field goal. Wallace able to knock down that three. He's up to five now in the game, but uh, been a balanced attack by Rock Creek so far. Um, but they've just got there again, like we talked about in our pregame. They've got so many weapons. It's just yeah. hard to pick your poison with them. Uh, you know, even with Dipper on the bench, you know, you move Treat down to the block, and, you know, he's 6'7". Uh, so, you know, just a load down there for Lanesville to handle, and uh, they've had to alter their shots. And it, it's mainly been Klusmeyer cutting to the basket the last uh, two trips to score for them. So Lanesville will get it in. A little pressure here by Rock Creek as Wolves will bring it up. He'll break the timeline, gets it in the corner to Hall. Hall with it. He'll wheel around top of the circle now. Backs it out, treat on him. He'll go over to Klusmeyer. Klusmeyer again drives the basket, tipped out by Biko, and it'll go back to Lanesville. Biko does a nice job of just reaching in there and tipping that ball away. Yes, he did. So, Eagles will inbound, Boyles to throw it in. He'll get it into Klusmeyer, back out to Hall. Hall over to Crosby. Crosby with it, looking, goes back to Hall far side. He goes baseline, Klusmeyer picks it up. Out to Boyles, he'll shoot the deep three. Can't get that to go and treat with another board as he'll pull it down and hand it off to Wallace. Wallace up quickly to Biko. He'll drive baseline and no basket even though he scored it. They're gonna say the foul came on the floor and that's gonna go against Crosby his first team's third. Yeah, I mean, Biko's just so athletic. He's able to put that foot in the ground and kind of kind of a running back move there, able to cut off of that. Steal there as Rock Creek turns it over. Lanesville gets it back. Boyles comes out of there with it, gets it off to Klusmeyer. He looks, can't find anybody. Now goes baseline as he gets it to Guernsey. Guernsey wheels around, finds Hall. He'll pull it up and shoot it. Hall's got a nice jumper yeah. from that spot. He's got his sixth point of the night. So 21 to 10 now, an 11 point lead for Rock Creek with 4.03 to go here in this first half. They'll hand it off to Taylor. He wheels around, hands it back over to Brown. He's back in the game off to Wallace now. Wallace gets it off to Taylor. Taylor off to Treat now. Treat down low to Biko. He'll spin, scored easy and one. Yeah, with a push. Yeah. Nice job by Biko on that spin move there. Gets him 10. Foul on Guernsey as he kind of pushed him. And that'll put Biko at the line. 
for a chance for a three-point play. Dipper will come in for three. So Biko will go to the free throw line. He's been up there once tonight. Missed the uh, only attempt he's had. This one's up, and he got that one to go. That's a nice, nice looking shot on that one. So he scores it again, 24 to, tw to 10. 14 point lead biggest of the night here by Rock Creek. Lanesville back the other way. Hall will get it off to Payne. Payne wheels around, tries to find the cutter. He does down the lane. And he Could offers a, a shot, dribble. but he double dribbled. Sure did. Turnover again by Lanesville. They're sixth of this first half. And Rock Creek will get it back here. Biko will inbound. He'll get it into Taylor. And Taylor will bring it up for the Lions. He'll wheel around. Gets it off to Jackson here. Jackson, yep, he sure did. He yeah. double dribbled. So six turnovers now for Rock Creek as well. Both teams turned it over six times here so far. You know, Rock Creek right now has four guards on the floor, and Biko's playing the forward position just because of the other personnel yeah. that they have in the game. And still, you know, doing a, a really good job of holding his own down in the post. They'll get it into Boyles. It's tipped away from him, goes off his foot. Dipper with the steal, another turnover for the Eagles. Back the other way, Rock Creek up quickly with it. Wallace backs it out. He'll get it to Taylor. Taylor drives, looks, thought about throwing it in there to Dipper, but he couldn't. He gets it out to Taylor. He'll shoot it from the free throw line. Scores his first points of the night. 26 to 10. Quick shot up there by Hall, no good. Rebound by Biko as he goes high forward. He'll bring it up quickly. Gets it to Dipper. He can't control it, and he lost yeah, it out of bounds. he was bounds. thinking, I'm going to throw this one down. Yeah, I think so. I thought he – now Treat will come in. He'll replace Brown, who will go to the bench. 26 to 10 here, 238 to go in the first half. And there's some – on the basketball, <laughs> some kind of perspiration. Perspiration, yeah. I was, I was going to say precip precipitation. Oh, that's, it's raining that's in here. That's what we had yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's raining in there. Lots of it, too. <laughs> I got my words all crossed up there. Timeout going to be called yeah, by Coach Rock. Brown going to take a timeout. 2.38, we'll see. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, so we'll stay here, but. 26 to 10, out to the biggest lead of the night at 16 for Rock Creek. You know, Rock Creek, like we said in the pregame, just so many weapons that they can go to. You know, if you can shut down Biko, then they've got two bigs inside that they can go to. Lanesville, you know, is, is trying to speed them up, trying to get them going up and down the floor, but that makes it even more difficult um, because that's not the style that Lanesville wants to play. They, they aren't a run-and-gun type team. You know, they're going to be a half-court offense, you know, set that up and, and try to try to shoot you you know out of it but right. just a just a, a mismatch of personnel here tonight yeah it definitely is I mean just a, a lot of athleticism on the floor for Rock Creek and not taking anything away from the Lanesville kids it's just you know you just you're outmatched yeah. size wise and physicality um, oh, another turnover there almost. The official didn't call it Treat, though, with a steal, so they do turn it over, Lanesville does. Treat will bring it down the floor, hand it to Biko, and he'll score again. 28-10 now. Lanesville back up with it. Wolves, or Crosby to bring it across, gets it down low, kicks it back out to Crosby. He'll shoot it now in the lane, in and out, no good. Nice rebound inside by Payne, but he has to go over Dipper. And now a steal as uh, 13 uh, gets it up. That's Kuzmeyer, he scores it in. 28-12. Rock Creek turned it over and Lanesville made him pay. Wallace drives down, he loses it off himself. And off his uh, side, it goes out of bounds. So. Both teams a little sloppy. Rock yeah. Creek up to uh, nine turnovers. Lanesville with eight. Lanesville gets it back. They'll inbound. They'll get it into Crosby. 
He'll get it off to Hall, and Hall will bring it across the timeline. 28 to 12, he'll hand it back out to Crosby. Crosby looking now. He'll get it off, and we'll go back over to Hall. There's a minute 30 to go. Hall will pull it down. Drives in there. Treat picks him up out high. Now gets it off to number two, Hodges. Hodges back over here to Crosby. Now down to Hall. He'll find the cutter down the lane and the shot up. Going to be a foul call. Yeah, I think they're going to get Biko from behind. Yep. yep. It's going to be Biko's first. As Boyles was driving, or Crosby was driving to the basket, he'll go to the free throw line. Hadn't scored yet tonight. He'll get his first opportunity here. Couple free throws. First one's up and it's good. 28 to 13, he'll get another one. Only the first attempt for Lanesville at the line. Second one's up, no good, rebound Dippers. He pulls it down, goes up high for it. He'll bring it up. He's gonna play guard. Yeah. So Dipper, who's a seven footer, gets it up, hands it off to Biko. Biko off to Taylor, Taylor. Back to Biko now here on the near wing. He looks down low, gets it to Treat, baseline. Treat will spin, throws it in to Dipper. He'll go up strong and score it. Dipper gets his second field goal. And it's 32-13. Crosby to bring it back up for the Eagles with 39 seconds to go here in the first half. He'll get it far side to Hodges. He'll go baseline, lost it, another turn over there. He'll get it back over to Rock Creek. Wallace will bring it up quickly. It's cut off, now dishes to Biko. He'll wheel around, goes inside the lane, throws up a one-handed runner. Can't get it to go, and a foul on the floor gonna go against Payne as he boxed out Dipper real hard there. Actually got Crosby, that's his second. Team's fifth. I'm glad it was his second because that's the one I missed earlier. Yeah. So now I got the now I got, got him right. right. Taylor with it. He'll bring it back out for Rock Creek and set things up here. 15 seconds to go here. Yeah. Are you going to go for the last shot here? Taylor on the attack gets it off to Biko. Biko with seven seconds, drives in the lane, pulls it down, shoots a 15-footer, and got it to go. So Biko scores again, and that's, that's the end of the first half. That's 15 in the first half for him. 32 to 13, we're gonna break. We'll add things up from this first half of play and come back here on your home for sectional number 61 where it's Rock Creek 32. It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Neidig. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Bob Lovell. This is our weekly conversation with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. And, Paul, I'm glad you're feeling better. A uh, And his historic weekend for uh, IHSAA sports this past weekend, quite frankly. Girls finals in basketball took place at Gainbridge Fieldhouse. Best crowd since nine, excuse me, since 2009. Boys swimming championships. We had two national records. Uh, that's a pretty good weekend for anybody. I tell you what, Coach, it was a, a really good weekend. You know, the, the unfortunate thing, I got to witness it all from my couch <laughs> last weekend. And, and certainly COVID still not anything to mess around with. But uh, we stayed home and watched IHSA TV and, and watched those different championships going on. And it was a phenomenal weekend. You know, I'm just uh, the the girls' tournament was five new teams, like, like you said, best attendance since right. 2009. Incredible games, great matchups. Uh, you know, and it, it just makes me so proud to be from Indiana. And you know, our folks still show up pilgrimage to Indianapolis and to support their teams. And we saw that. Uh, we also had an incredible crowd at the at the swim meet where those national records yeah. were being broken. Uh, yeah. So uh, phenomenal weekend. You know, I've done um, championship games on radio and TV for 
a while, <laughs> to be honest. I, I, I've lost track of of how long. And uh, when asked, I, I always prefer to do um, the 1A or 2A because the, the smaller town, I, I just love the whole story of the smaller towns of literally the entire town coming up to Indianapolis or coming down to Indianapolis to support their team. And you know, you know just the enthusiasm, the passion – Love for those young ladies and young men when they do it. It's it, it's gratifying to as a small town guy. I just love watching those stories unfold every year. Coach, that's what it's made of, you know, and you know that well. I mean, I'm I'm I grew up in a small town too, and and spent my career in a in a in more of an urban setting in Evansville. But you know, the stories that come along with this week. You know the, you know the Bedford girls uh, as an example. They've been together as a team since basically the third grade. I think I read somewhere that the community endears them, and then they support them, and they had an incredible crowd. Uh, you know, and and those stories are throughout the tournament. You know, of, of kids that have done well uh, in their local communities, and and the community shows up, supports them, and then they. They don't all get a play in Indianapolis, but everyone that does has got a great following and, and good community tradition. And as we said before, the, there's nothing more important or special than that short time mm-hmm. that you're in high school. You get to put the uniform on of your high school's name on it. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal weekend and, and event. He's the commissioner of the IHSA. It's Paul Nightingale. Not only that, Paul, two national records in swimming. Man, oh man, we you know we talk about basketball in Indiana. We're a swimming state <laughs> in many respects. That's just an incredible performance. It is, coach, and you know that that's on top of I think two national records that were set in the girls' meet uh, two weeks before, and I think we had a brother and sister in the same event that both set national records this past week which is i'm sure that family has a lot to celebrate now but again it's we have kids uh, and we'll go back to lily king and we've talked about lily and others that that right right consistently perform at a world-class level in the sport of swimming and i'm sure there'll be several kids that competed uh, in the boys and girls state swim meet that'll be uh, on that olympic podium someday for the united states he's the commissioner of the ihsa it's paul nightingan Commissioner, thanks for all you do. Congratulations to you and everybody associated with the association. It's been a fantastic month. It'll continue to be that way and have fun this weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. Absolutely, Coach, and thank you for doing what you do for the student-athletes in our state. Thanks for listening to The Commissioner's Corner with IHSAA Commissioner Paul Neidig and Coach Bob Lovell. And thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. Or just visit our website. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. You have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and fine. adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. 
For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. Michael Long with American Family Insurance offers auto, home, business, farm, and life insurance, which includes motorcycles, boats, ATVs, UTVs, classic and antique autos, renters, manufactured homes, rentals, along with event coverage such as weddings, golf hole-in-ones, conferences, and much, much more. He's licensed in Indiana, Ohio, and Florida. For more information, look him up on Facebook to see insurance tips and to sign up for his agency giveaways. Michael Long, American Family Insurance, all your protection under one roof. I like the power deck. You lift it up, clean your deck out, and then wash it out. And you know, I can change those blades in approximately five minutes. In our terrain, we have to have a mower that can back up quick, turn quick. Nothing's ever stopped that mower. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for kids, teens, or young adults. It's just not. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs. And dangerous things like metals and volatile organic compounds into your body. And nicotine, the same highly addictive substance found in regular cigarettes. Nicotine can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. Affecting learning, memory, attention, and impulse control and priming the brain for other addictions. Vaping products also come in kid-friendly flavors that can make them appealing to youth. And many kids also use other drugs, like marijuana, in vaping devices. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping, because when you talk, they hear you. At Eddie Gilstrap, our customers are family. Rated in the top 6% nationwide in Ford dealers, we pride ourselves on our no pressure environment, honesty, and integrity. Come see us today and discover why we're different. Eddie Gilstrap Motors. I'm David Calhoun, Grass Clippings LLC. During the summer, I'm on this thing eight, 10 hours a day. I know the feel of it. Grasshopper means quality. They don't fall apart. I've looked at all of them in the industry. I don't think nothing can stand up to them. Links Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our There you go. All right, back here live at sectional 61, the second semifinal of the night here as Rock Creek out to a 32 to 13 point uh, lead here over the Lanesville Eagles here. So we start the third quarter. Rock Creek will have the basketball. Biko will inbound. He'll get it off to Taylor. Taylor will dribble far side, hand it off to Wallace. He'll come around the screen, find Dipper cutting the basket, can't get it to go. Ball tipped around, a rebound pulled down there by Lanesville's Boyles. He'll get it up quickly to Hall. He'll stroke it, and Hall will score again. He's got eight on the night, and it's 32 to 15. Taylor back the other way for the Lions. He'll hand it off to Biko. Biko will wheel around, gets it off to Wallace. Wallace will drive, goes around everybody, throws it up, can't get it. Dipper there with the rebound. He misses the bunny, and the ball's tipped back to Taylor, the smallest guy on the floor, and he scores it. So Taylor gets his second field goal tonight, and it's 34-2-15. Back the other way, Lanesville with it now. Crosby, he'll pull it down, hands it off there to number 11, Boyles. Boyles now gets it off to Crosby. Crosby. Hands it off to number 13 there, Klusmeyer. He'll get it to Payne. Now back to Crosby. Now to Hall. He'll shoot another deep air ball off the back of the rim. Rebound Biko for Rock Creek. He'll give it to Wallace. Wallace back to Biko. 
Biko will drive it, gets it out to Taylor. Taylor spins, kicks it back to Biko. He'll get it off to Wallace. Wallace will pull it down and he'll set things up again. Gets it off to Treat. Treat back to Wallace. Wallace, nice spin move in the lane, throws up a shot. Can't draw iron. He gets it to Wolves and run out to Payne, and Payne will score it easy as Payne gets his first bucket of the night. And it's 34 17. Quick pass down low to Dipper. He'll spin in the lane, goes up strong. Can't score it, but he's fouled on the floor. Almost so, got blocked on that yeah. one. Yeah, he almost did. That's going to go against Hall. That'll be his first. And the team's first here in the second half, so Dipper will go to the line. He's only got uh, four points in the game here tonight as they haven't been able to get it down to him much inside. Lanesville's done a pretty good job keeping the ball away from him, but he'll go to the free throw line here. Well, and that's where, you know, they've got so many weapons. Misses that first one off the front of the rim hard, but he'll get another one here. You know, if you shut Dipper down, you know, then Biko comes through just like he has tonight and has 15, so. Right, absolutely. So Dipper back at the stripe, second free throws up, and he got that one to go, so he scores one of two. And it's 35 to 17, a 17, 18 point lead here. Ball tipped away from Boyles. Taylor keeping him in the backcourt, just does get it across. He'll get it off the hall, he'll drive it. He lost it, stolen away there by Taylor. He'll drive all the way down, throws it up off the rim, can't get it to go. Dipper with another board. And he turns accidentally hits pain in the nose yeah. and nose pain will go to the floor but the foul goes against Boyles. Number 11, so his second. Team second here as Rock Creek will inbound underneath their own bucket here. Just a wrong place the yeah, wrong yeah, time on sure that was. one. <laughs> it wasn't any intention by Dipper but just happened. Dipper throws it up and gets it to go. So he scores his seventh point. 37 to 17 out to a 20 point lead. That's just how fast they yeah. can get going. I mean, we said he just had four, now he's got seven. Hall with an errant pass and saved in bounds there as they get it back in to Crosby. Crosby around the screen. He'll pull up, shoot the three. And can't get it. Nice rebound inside by Payne. Knocked away from him by Taylor. And now come, oh, they come out of the pack with it. Did Wallace, but he stepped on the out of bounds line. So it'll go back to the Eagles here. So a turnover the first of the second half here. Number 21, Patterson will come back in. He'll replace Payne. as Voiles will inbound underneath his own bucket here. He'll get it in, kicks it out to Hall and the block, block shot there by Dipper. He'll take it in now and slam it home for two more as he gets a run out there and gets a dunk to go. 39-17. Back up here quickly, Crosby with it. Drives inside the free throw line. He's gonna be fouled by Biko. As Biko picks up his second. Hodges checks back in for Hall. And Lanesville will inbound here right in front of their own bench. It's Coach Miller directing traffic there a little bit. As Wolves will throw it in for them. Finds a cutter going to the basket, gets it into Crosby. He'll kick it out there to number two Hodges. He'll drive, throws it up for Patterson. Shoots it on the baseline, can't get it to go. However, rebound pulled down by Hodges. He'll get it back to Crosby. Now back to uh, number 13, Klusmeyer, but it's blocked out of bounds by Dipper. <laughs> so it's just so hard when you get the ball in the paint to score with uh, seven foot, six, seven in yeah. there. Because <clears throat> when you get by one, the other one's waiting. Yep, here comes Jackson back in the game. He'll come in for Dipper. Memphis Jackson. Dipper will go to the bench, get a breather. Jackson back into the game for him. 
Boyles to inbound for the Eagles. He'll get it in. It'll come into Patterson. Patterson looking, gets it down low. Back to Boyles. He'll spin. Goes in strong. Blocked from behind by Treat. Rebounded there by Hodges, but blocked again by Treat. Yeah. And it'll go back to Lanesville. So there again, when you get it in the paint, even with Dipper out of there, you, you move Treat down there, and he's 6'7", so it's hard to get anything going inside. Now they turn it over to the Eagles as they throw it right to Biko. He'll drive it, throws it up. Can't score it, but he gets fouled. So he'll go back to the free throw line. Yeah, you're exactly right. You, they sub Dipper out and Treat moves over. But you got to remember, you still have Biko on the floor, who arguably is probably the most athletic kid in the, the gym. No Every doubt. time he steps in it. He had not scored here <laughs> in this second half yet, but he goes to the line. First free throws up, and it rings in. Gives him 16. Yep. 40. 217 here. Guernsey back into the game. 22 Brown will check in for Taylor. Brown. And Biko will have another free throw. Second one's up, and it's good. So he gets them both to go. 41-17 here. Lanesville back up the floor with it. Crosby will bring it across, hand it off to Patterson. He loses it for a second. Now gets it off to Kluzmeyer. Back to Hodges. Hodges now hands it off to Guernsey. Guernsey looking, gets it off to Kluzmeyer. Kluzmeyer hands it off to Hodges. Hodges finds a cutter down the lane. Gets it inside to Guernsey. Now back out there to Kluzmeyer. Now out to Crosby. Crosby off to Hodges. Finds the cutter and Kluzmeyer. He goes in strong, blocked by Treat. They're going to call him for the foul. Yeah, get him with the body maybe. Yeah. That'll be Treat's second foul. Team's third. Second, team second. Or team second, yeah. I'm going to give him two free throws. Yeah, they say he was in the act of shooting. So Kluzmeyer will go to the free throw line. He'll get a couple free throws here. 41-17 Rock Creek. Kuzmeyer at the line. First one's up, and he drills it home. Dipper back into the game for treat with those two fouls. Kuzmeyer back at the line now for that second free throw. 3.31 to go here in this third quarter. It's been a little slow moving. Second. Comes up, knocks them both in. 74% yeah. free throw shooter on the year, so. 41-19. Back the other way, Wallace for the Lions. He'll bring it across. This goes around the screen of Dipper. Went down hard. And he's rolling around on the floor. Man, something happened there. Yeah, Dipper, uh, I, I didn't exactly I didn't see, see what, what happened. I didn't see what went on. Like he got hit. Don't exactly know I what. I don't know what. I didn't catch it there either. I don't yeah. know if you can catch it on the replay or not, but it uh, looked like he come around the screen there and I got chucked in the stomach. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. He may have got hit right in the stomach. You know, so. He's so tall and lanky, not much meat there in the middle of his, not like me, you know, I got plenty <laughs> of meat, but yeah, he's kind of holding his uh, Yeah, it may have been a shoulder of somebody else. Yeah, it could have been because as tall as he is, he might have took the shoulder. I hit him right in the ribs or something, so he's going to come out yeah. and he'll have to here, they'll check him out. And uh, Treat will check back in for Dipper. So it'll go back to the Lions here as Jackson will inbound for Rock Creek. He'll get it into Wallace. He'll hand it off to Biko, goes down low to Treat. 
Treat will spin in the lane. Nice move as he scores it. I, I don't know how you stop that. <laughs> yeah, it's just tough. 43 to 19 now. Crosby back the other way for the Eagles. He'll get it off there to Guernsey. Guernsey with it. Gets it off to Patterson. Patterson back over to Kluzmeyer. Back out to Patterson. He'll shoot the three, and he got it. Nice shot there as he scores his first bucket on the three-point shot. So 43-22. And Biko loses it, so a turnover there on the lines. As Boyle steals it away, and he, or Crosby, he'll go to the deck, gets fouled there. So I believe that's going to go against Jackson, his first personal. And that'll put Crosby at the line. So Crosby will get a couple. Of, or, let's see, they call that a one on one? Or? Yeah, no, it's got to be two. It's got to be two. He was in there after shooting. So it's up and it's good. Crosby, 75% yeah. free throw shooter on the year. 43-23 now, 20-point lead. Second free throw coming here for Crosby. Second one's up, and it rims in. So rolls home, 24-43. And Taylor with a deep three, and he buried it. Er, nope, that was Brown. I said Taylor. Okay, Brown scores again. Gives him five. 46-24. And a travel with it, so Lanesville turns it over. It'll go back to the Rock Creek Academy. As they lead it here, 46-24. So inbound, Jackson will get it into Brown. Brown will bring it up. Crosses over the timeline, hands it off to Wallace. Wallace wheels around, hands off to Jackson. Back to Brown. Brown will pull it down, drives, gets cut off there, dishes back out to Jackson. And they reach in on him, does Hodges. His first foul, team's fourth. Jackson will inbound. Gets it in the treat. Treat will spin, take it in the lane, dishes there to Biko, and he scores it. So Biko scores again. And Lanesville turns it over again as they try to throw it down quickly to Patterson. 48 24. 135 to go in the third quarter. Lions inbound to get it to Biko. He drives the lane, throws up a runner, and it's going to be a foul on the floor. No shot. <laughs> Official does a nice job of catching Biko yeah, as he did. goes through <laughs> and then has to come over and report. That's Crosby's fourth foul. So, Kuzmeyer will come back in for Crosby. Taylor back into the game for Rock Creek. Go inbound to Brown. He'll kick it off to Taylor. Taylor on the attack, drives it, goes in. Can't get it to go. Treat tips it up, can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound back to Biko, and he scores it. 50 to 24. Rock Creek, they get it inside to Patterson. He'll dish it out to number 10 for a deep three. No good. That was Guernsey and a rebound. Taylor, he gets it to Biko. Reverse layup, and he scores it again. It's Biko 23. Yeah, he's really having the game. 52-24. Hodges with it. He'll get it across the timeline. Jackson all over him. And he'll flip it back over to Payne. He'll go to Patterson. Back out to Guernsey. He gets cut off, now throws it up high. And saved inbounds to Biko. Biko to Treat, and Treat will score. 54-24, 30-point lead. They'll get it down to Patterson with the Eagles. He gets a bunny as they beat everybody up the floor. 54-26, Biko saves it inbounds. Stolen, though, so another turnover by Rock Creek. And Laneville out and running. They get it off. And they drive in, and gonna Treat's going to foul yeah. uh, Kluzmeyer. Treat's third personal. 
10.7 left to go here in the third. Oh, uh, they called that on Brown. His first. Thought they were going to get to a treat there. Yeah. Klusmeyer will go to the line. He's two for two up there tonight. And now he's three for three because he knocks the first one down. 74% on the year. Only averages three a game. So him having nine tonight is over his season average right. for the junior. Klusmeyer back up there. Gets them both. So he's got 10 on the night. 54-28. Taylor quickly in the corner to Nord to check back in. Now they turn it over again. The Rock Creek getting a little sloppy with it. And now they steal it back at the buzzer. No shot as Jackson stole it back there. So that's the end of the third quarter here. Rock Creek up 54-28. We'll take a break. Come back here on your home for sectional 61 West Washington live stream. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. Unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. 9421 or just visit our website. Three, two. All right, back here live in Campbellsburg, Indiana, here at West Washington High School. Sectional number 61 here in Class 1A basketball as the Rock Creek Lions out to a 54 to 28 lead over the Lanesville Eagles here in this sectional uh, semifinal matchup here, second game of the night. Borden advancing in that first game to the final on Monday night. They'll play the winner of this one, which looks like right now will probably be Rock Creek. And, you know, <laughs> unless Lanesville mounts a miraculous <clears throat> comeback here. They'll get the ball well, the Eagles, to start the fourth quarter. Boyles brings it up for them. He'll cross the timeline. Looks, finds Payne cutting the basket, and Payne scores it. So Payne with his fourth point, and it's 54 to 30, a 24 point lead. Wallace back the other way for Rock Creek. He'll dribble here near side, now gets it far side to Nord. Nord will go baseline, now kicks it back out to Jackson. He'll save it right at the timeline. And Jackson on the tack, drives by everybody, dishes to Dipper, and he scores another one. I didn't see Dipper check back in. Yeah, he come back in there at the break. Gives him 11. 56 to 30. Boyles with it, dribbles far side. Gets cut off there. And dishes down there to Hodges. Hodges back out to Boyles. Boyles pulls it down. Dip, gets it back to Hodges. Hodges drives by everybody. Throws it up high over Dipper. Can't get it. Treat with the rebound. He'll get it off to Wallace. Wallace quickly up the floor. Drives in there. Throws up a runner. And he gets fouled. As he'll go to the free throw line. Foul going to be called on Number 13, Klusmeyer, his first. Team six, so Wallace will go to the line. He's got five on the night. Chance to build on that. So he'll step up there for a couple free throws. First one's up, and it's good. Oh, looked really good. Yep. Second one coming here for Wallace. Yeah, it rims around Drew about every piece of iron it could draw and falls through 58 to 30. Back the other way now, Crosby for the Eagles. He'll get it off there to Boyles. Boyles out to Payne. He'll go down low to Patterson. He'll spin, shoot it from the baseline. Can't get it to go. Tipped out to Wallace. 
He'll get it up to Treat. Treat will drive, throws up a runner in the lane, got fouled on the arm, and he'll go to the free throw line. It's going to go against number 21, Patterson, his second, second team seven. So Treat will go to the line. He's got eight points tonight, chance to build on his. As he gets his ninth point there on the first free throw, gets another one. Paul will come back in for uh, Kluzmeyer. And Treat will go back to the line. Second free throw is up. Hits the front of the rim, no good. Rebound pulled down and out of there by Payne. He'll get it off to Voiles. Voiles drives, gets cut off there. Looks and gets it back out to Payne. Back to Boyles now. Boyles will wheel around, goes in the lane. He traveled with it. Nope, oh, gonna, gonna call foul. Him a foul. It's gonna go against Nord. His first, team's fifth. Taylor comes back in. It'll be out of bounds to Lanesville underneath their own bucket. Ball will come in. It comes out high there to Voiles. He'll go over to Hall. Now to Crosby. Shoots a three. Can't get it. Ball tipped, and it's out of bounds. It'll go back to Rock Creek. Biko back in for treat. Yep. Taylor to inbound for the Lions here with uh, six minutes to go in the ball game. He'll get it in and a foul gonna be called. It's gonna be Nolan Hall. Yep, Hall's second now foul. One, Hall now we're gonna go shoot free throws. One and one, so now we're gonna shoot free throws. Where well, the Lions are six of eight yeah, for they've, 75%. They've shot it They were only 50% well. in the first half, but Wallace will step up there. He shot two free throws, hit them both. We'll get a one and one here. So, first free throw coming. It's up, and he rims it in. Makes it a 30 point game. 60 to 30. Wallace will get another one. Second one coming now. He'll eye the second one. Toes the line now. Puts it in the air and it rims in as well. 61 to 30. Patterson with it. Kicks it out. Crosby. He'll drive. Throws up a one handed runner. Got it to go. Gives him five on the night. 61 32. Taylor back the other way. He'll get it over to Wallace. Wallace. Backs it out, now throws it over to Jackson. He'll pull it down, hands it off to Taylor, back over to Wallace, back to Taylor. He'll drive in, free throw line shot, off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound pulled down by Voiles. He'll bring it up, gets trapped there, and a steal by Biko. Biko off and running. He lost it for a second, and then it bounces off Dipper. Now they dish it back to Dipper, and he scores it. 63-32. Shipper's got 13, Biko has 23, and then Treat has nine and Wallace has nine. Yeah, so. so they're real close to having four guys in double figures. Boyles with it down low, he'll spin on Taylor, throws it up, can't get it off the rim. Patterson fighting for it, Boyles got it back, gets it to Patterson, he scores it and one as he gets fouled. So Patterson with the bucket. He'll have a chance to complete the three-point play here. They're going to get deep Dipper for his first. Dipper with his first foul, yeah. Hard to believe. Treat will come in now. Patterson will step up to the line, chance to complete the three-point play. 
Hard off the back of the rim, no good. Treat with the rebound. He'll get it out to Biko, up quickly to Taylor. Taylor drive, wings it in the corner over there to Jackson. He'll kick it back out to Taylor. Taylor tries to get it inside. Another turn over there by Rock Creek. And Lanesville up with it quickly. They get it out to Hodges. He'll find the cutter down the lane and Boyles, and Boyles scores his first points. 36, 63. Wallace back the other way. He'll pull it down, now dishes to Treat. Treat spins, goes in strong, throws it up, and got it to go. He got his 11 points. Yep, that gets him in double digits. 65-36. As Crosby brings it up, we'll get it off to Hodges, now to Patterson. Patterson will shoot the deep three off the rim, no good. Jackson with the board for Rock Creek, and he loses it. And it'll go back to Rock Creek. And all new lines coming in, 32 Nord back in, 24 Clark checks in for the first time. And here comes number 20, Mitchell. Nope, not yet. <laughs> so they'll get it in to uh, 22, Brown. He'll kick it back over here to Jackson. Jackson throws it inside to Treat. Treat will drive it, spins, throws it up, got it. Pretty athletic for a 6'7 yeah. kid. 67-35. Lanesville takes it down low, gets it inside there to Crosby, and he scores again. 38 to 67. Quickly up the floor with it. Rock Creek takes it in. Number 24 puts up the shot. That's Clark. He missed it, but the rebound pulled down. He'll drive in the lane, throws up a one-handed runner. Clark with the rebound. He'll hand it off to Jackson. He'll get it across to Nord. Nord. Pulls it down, throws a cross court out to Brown. Brown on the attack now, blows by everybody, and he scores it. That gives him seven. seven. Yep. 69 36, and another turnover by Lanesville. As Treat brings it up, he takes coast to coast, and he scores it. Seventy-one thirty-six. Rock Creek gonna clear their bench here. Yeah, they're gonna take a thirty-second timeout yep. just to get their kids get their in. Subs in with two twenty-four to go. You know, and, and Rock Creek subs in. I believe they subbed in three freshmen. Um, they yeah. are a senior-heavy team, so these kids getting in, you know, are getting some some varsity experience. And they're, they're getting out their seniors. You know, Dipper's a senior, um, Biko's a senior, and Treat is a senior. Yep. So those are, those are your, your seniors coming out. Yeah, they've got uh, number 20, Mitchell on the floor. Nord's a freshman. Mitchell's a freshman. 44 is the only sophomore on the floor. I think, yeah, on the floor, I think everybody I think. else is a freshman. Boyles with it. He'll get it off to Hodges. And back out to Crosby. He'll shoot the three. No good. Patterson pulls the rebound. Shot back up. No good. Nord with the board. He'll pull it down. Gets it up quickly. 44 with it. He'll drive. And he'll score it. That's mid kiff 73-36. And Boyles brings it across. Three-pointer up, air ball. Rebound pulled down there by 24 Clark. He'll get it yeah, he'll gonna, get fouled. Gonna get fouled. They fouled just to get a kid on the floor, I believe. Yeah, he may have. Boyles is third. Team's ninth. Clark will come 
to the stripe. His first chance to score it tonight. Jack, Jack Crosby checks out with his seventh point. Ethan Patterson also checks out with seven, seven points, points on the night. Both of those guys are seniors. Yep. So Lanesville does a nice job, standing ovation for those seniors. So Clark will go to the line. Free throws up, and it's good. It's at 72-38. 74. Oh, 74-38. Second one's up, and it rims out. Rebound pulled down by Hodges. They'll get at the Boils. Back over there to Hodges. Now inside there, 42, Elias with it. He kicks it out to 24. Back to Boils. Now Elias, he'll spin. Nice move in the lane, can't get the shot. Nord with another board. He'll pull it down. Gets it inside there. Number 20, Mitchell with it. He'll shoot it and he'll score. That's good by number 20, Mitchell. 76, 38. Hodges with it. He'll kick it off. 42 with the three pointer. And he buried it. That's Elias. Nice shot by him. 41, 76. Inside the Clark, now back out to Nord. Nord will back it out with 21 seconds. Down to 12, and that's probably going to be our final yeah. here tonight. 76 to 41. So Rock Creek comes away with a 35 point victory here tonight to advance to the final game on. Monday night against the Borden Braves here at West Washington for this sectional 61 title. We're going to take a break. We'll add things up real quickly and come back here on your home for sectional 61. West. Gates, Carnegie, Rockefeller. I'm not. Generous, caring, rich in spirit, I am. You don't have to be a person of great wealth to make an impact. When caring individuals give through a flexible, creative, capable organization known as a community foundation, our philanthropic potential is unlimited. As your local community foundation, we provide you the opportunity to permanently support the causes you care about both near and far. We do this by protecting and administering permanent funds through thoughtful grant making to improve the quality of life in the community we serve. Simply put, Donors who give through a community foundation build sustainable, permanent funds called endowments through contributions, big and small, to support organizations they care about most, forever. Through the generosity of our many donors and the responsible, informed investment of permanent funds, we will increase our grant-making ability for the benefit of our community for generations to come. All we need is you. What causes are you passionate about? What organization matters most to you? We can help you ensure your charitable interests are supported forever. Donors can give to an existing endowment or establish their own. Some choose to give now, while others make their gift later through their will or estate plan. To learn what your options are, talk to your community foundation. We're here to help you reach your philanthropic goals. If you love our community, let's leave our little corner of the world a bit better than we found it. Not just today, but for future generations too. The Washington County Community Foundation has been making our home a terrific place to live, work, and play since 1993 through the generosity of donors just like you. Why? Well, just like you, we also really love our community. Two, one. All right, back here live West Washington High School as we add things up from the game uh, here tonight uh, for the victorious Lions of Rock Creek, 76 to 41. To run down the scoring real quick for Lanesville, Kluzmeyer led them. He was the only player in double figures with 10. Had two guys with seven, Crosby and uh, Patterson. 
finished the game with seven points apiece. Hall had four field goals for eight points. Uh, Boyles with a bucket for two. Elias had the three-pointer for three. And then also two field goals for Payne as he finishes the game with four to give Lanesville 41. For uh, Rock Creek in the uh, victory here tonight, Biko led them in scoring with 23 points. Um, Dipper uh, finished the game with uh, 13. Treat finished with 15, so had three guys in double figures. Wallace uh, finished the game with nine points. Um, then they had Brown with seven, uh, Taylor with four, Mitchell had two, and Midkiff come into the game and got two. They're late to give them their 76 points on the night, and they advance to take on Borden in the sectional final here on Monday night. So kind of hard to believe a Monday night final, but there's several of those going on around the state due to those storms yesterday. And we'll have Borden taking on the Rock Creek Academy Lions here on uh, Monday evening game time at 7. So we'll be with you about, about 6.30-ish. 6 yeah, somewhere in there. But um, – should be a good final. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to for. see how Borden matches up yes. against Rock Creek with the size advantage um, and the athleticism that they have. So very interesting matchup there between those two teams for the sectional 61 championship. Yeah, it should be a good one here. So uh, tune in with us. We want to thank our sponsors uh, once again for bringing us the sectional 61 here from West Washington High School. Uh, our thanks out to them. Uh, Eddie Gilstrap Motors. Let's see, you're going to have to help me with those. Uh, Eddie Gilstrap Motors, the Washington County Prevention Awareness. Um, Wright Brother Implements down in yes, Borden. Borden. Lynx Clothing and Shoes. American Family with Michael Long. Um, I believe those Who are else we got? I believe those Is are it. it. Is yeah. that what we got? Yeah, those okay. are what we've got. So, once again, thank you to all those sponsors. We'll yes. be back with you live. Um, Monday night. Yep. It seems weird saying that. Monday it does. night That's at, weird. at around 6:30, 6:45, something in there. Um, so that game will be live streamed, so you can catch it on the IHSAA TV network along with WWSR. So either one of those two places, you can catch that, um, catch the action there. Bubba, yep. final thoughts? That's about all I got. Uh, you know, two games here tonight that kind of got uh, out. You know, we've seen two close games on uh, Tuesday night. The two games here tonight were. A little more, you know, disparity in the teams, but uh, you know, both both these two advancing. I'm I'm thinking we're going to have a pretty close game on Monday night. So I, I would agree with you. Looks look looking forward to a good one. So that's all the time we got here tonight. So for Craig Akers, the professor, this is Bubba Abbott. We say God bless you. Have a